quickly. Let's pull up from the Gospels again, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 and 51. We'll read that. And this is familiar to you. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, that is right there on the line for you, where I'm focused. The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and you know what the rest, the rest of it said. Um, this is the, what we call part of the seven last words, last sayings, with that particular one. After he had cried and yielded up his spirit, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Amen. That veil in the temple. Now, there are other scriptures uh, that, that coincide with that. I can put them all up there. But it's in uh, Mark, the same story is in uh, Mark and in Luke, Luke 23. I think Mark 15. It says the same thing in the, what they call synopt synoptic gospel. So the question today to open this up is, what does the veil represent? That veil was torn into. Well, I don't think I put all of it up here. But in Exodus tw uh, 26, let me just read uh, a few of them. This is the making of the veil that God give, gave to Moses when he set up the portable tabernacle. You shall make you know, there. I'm not going to read all of the threads and the scholar, you know, all the next kind of the technicalities of, of it. Um, and you shall hang the veil uh, upon clamps, which will be upon the golden rod. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there behind the veil. And the veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and the most holy place. So we know that the, the veil was set up and designed by uh, God given to Moses to be a separator or a divider that separate, separates the holy place from the most holy place. You have the opening of the portable tabernacle and a whole lot of other furnishing there. Uh, the holy place was right before that you set up uh, a certain kind of curtain or so that would, you know, rep represents a veil where the holy, the most holy place where when the, the tablets of stone, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, a few other things were in there. And this is where the priest would go in once a year to make atonement for the sins of the people. Yeah. He would go in. Now they would tie a rope around the priest because if he had not gone through the proper protocol, he could be killed in the presence of God. Yeah. Struck. And if that was the case, based on the law, you know, you can't touch a dead body if you're not consecrated and, 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 and a priest of the priesthood, you couldn't go in. So there would be no way to retrieve his body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and there were veils that he had also on the road. So if they weren't kind of him a little bit saying that he was doing you know the visit of the priest uh, he may have been struck dead and then they would have to pull him out of the most holy place the presence of God into where they can get and then retrieve him and then of course that was another process because you touch a dead body you had to purify yourself for so many days and so forth so on outside the camp but the veil was that set up uh, to be that that divider I think I, I put a, another scripture up there. So, what we just read in Matthew, I'm moving quick so you got to stay with me. There's a lot of stuff I omitted. Um, what the veil was set up for to represent as a divider. Now we just read in Matthew uh, at the death of Jesus on the cross when he yielded up the ghost something happened. The veil in the temple 
was torn, torn apart. We know that the veil again represented uh, a separation between the holy and the most holy where anybody couldn't go in. So up until then, a veil was always made and developed as part of the, the decor of the temple that you know, said that only priests could go in here to make atonement and so forth and so on. And yet when Christ died, that veil was torn in two from top to bottom. It wasn't just torn, because they used the word T.W.O. number two, torn into, torn in two, ripped from, from top to bottom. Uh, Hebrew, there had some other scriptures in there. Uh, get to the next. So here's, here's what I propose to you, and I'm, I'm going to read some things to help you to see this. What that veil, the tearing of the veil, represents. So I got right back to the point that that's our subject. The reopening of paradise. In other words, re-entry into the Edenic presence of God. Come on, Jesus. See that again, because this is the heart of this is already. Mm -hmm. It's where we work from. Because the veil separated the common or the holy from the most holy. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus died, it was torn yes. to pieces. Yes. Come on. Come on. So there's no longer a dividing line yes. between the holy yes. and the yes. most holy. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, now. Come on. Come on, Dr. Richard. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that thing that separated the holy from the most yes, holy is no longer there. Yes, Lord. Yes. And, 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 and I think I put it all up there, uh, re-entry into paradise. In Hebrews 10, I'm going to give you a few scriptures and then I'll read a bit more. It says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place, and this is really talking about the most holy place, it's talking about behind the veil. The holy place, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated, and this is a new living translation, he inaugurated this for us through the veil, that is his flesh, right. is what it represents. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, God Almighty, let us draw near, which in, in some translation said, let us therefore enter with a sincere heart in full assurance that we have a right to enter into the holy place. For so the veil is not there. So he said, you, you, you can enter with full assurance of faith. Hallelujah. Because all of us, to some degree, are priests kings and so forth of the Lord. All of us have been anointed and consecrated and, and sanctified and set apart. So all of us have a right to enter the throne of grace to obtain mercy, to enter the holy place or the most holy place that we may obtain mercy. The dividing line that separated the holy from the most holy has been torn into. Now I think I put a, a, a the veil represented that, of course, the separation between the holy and most holy. Um, screening from the ark, a screening, rather, the ark and the cherubims and the temper, it screened them away from everything. Thus, the veil screened the holy of holies and so forth and so forth. And it was also the boundary between earth and heaven, is what it represented. It was the boundary between the common and the most holy. It represented separation between God and Israel, which represents man. Yes. So that veil represents that, that dividing that, that you cannot just enter into here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It, it, it represents a separation between God and man. Yes. Now, let me, let me quick uh, give you this. Um, uh, I think I put it up there. There is no longer any uh, physical or spiritual barriers. Let me see if I got, well, I got, let me read the rest of the scripture and I think I have that point up there. Uh, Hebrews 6 says, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters 
within the veil that God Almighty here, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for yeah. us. So, in other words, when Jesus entered, and that's yes. what it, the picture is yes. painted now, is that Jesus entered, and when he entered, he tore the veil of yes. Yes. So he went in as a forerunner and said, now you can follow me. After he entered, he gave up the spirit and went on the glory. But the way had been cleared for men going into the world. In other words, you can approach the Father through me now. Because the way has been cleared. He is not the only runner. He's a forerunner. That means one that goes before to prepare the way for others to follow. Tell somebody say, this ain't going to be one of them stories. Come on. I'm standing on the outside looking in. Now I'm going inside. I'm going in. Come on in like the rain. Amen. Amen. So, so here's the point from that. Any all any barrier or all barriers prohibiting access to the presence of God has been disarmed, destroyed, and torn apart. I'm gonna say that again because you have to get that right there. All barriers. Prohibiting access to God. Let me, let me put it another way. Any teaching. Come on. All right. Come on. Any teaching. All right. And the pastor, priest, prophet, I don't care, apostle, I don't care what office you hold, bishop. That tells you that you can't be blessed except through me. It's not a teaching of God. It is not from God. First of all, you are not the mediator. And I call to this right here. The way has already been cleared through Christ, but it's by the represents that they are. I'm going to say it one more time. So anybody that tells you that you can't be blessed except you are oh, Devil is a liar. God will give you these things, these offices for the perfection of the saints and the work of the ministry and so forth and so on. It has its place. But your, 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 your life does not hinge upon me being blessed. But upon your relationship with God and your right to walk and enter into the whole holy place, because there ain't nothing separating you from the most holy. Yes. Yes. And any barrier that prohibits, I don't care what, who it comes from or what it comes from, that prohibits access to the presence of God is not of God because according to the teaching, it has been disarmed, destroyed, and we just read in Matthew chapter, torn apart. And Jesus is the forerunner who went in. To that away. Yes. And then he yielded up the spirit and he went on back. But the way had been made. Yes, the work had been done. Yes, Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lift your hand and tell the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.